so basically when we go for data browse development there are two approaches one is a top down approach other is a bottom up approach so in case of top down approach our approach is build the data browse first and then split the data into different data parts as per the requirement of uh, different division or department but when it comes to the bottom up approach first we build the data parts it is like we build the data parts for sales domain build the data parts for maybe materials domain build the data parts for your accounts and finance domain and then integrate them into data browse so practically top down approach implementation is a bit tough because uh, analyzing the entire system designing the entire system and then development deployment testing all these things will take lot of time and investment most of the client they say that i can't give you 2 to 3 years in a stretch for the development i can't put this budget within the 2 or 3 years at a time because uh, my company budget is like yearly i can give you 1 billion dollar but your requirement is a 10 billion dollar so which i can't give you in 2 or 3 years so practical implementation of top down approach is not uh, very uh, easy or comfortable with most of the client so they prefer to go for bottom up approach means develop the data browse for my sales process first then develop for my hr process then develop for my materials process then develop for finance process and at the end you integrate them as a complete data browse for my top down so bottom up approach provides the uh, flexibility to the client to develop the system in the bits and pieces uh, within their budget and within the time frame of 3 to 6 months or 1 year and each part gets developed gets implemented user starts working on them they they have a feel you can feel of uh, data browsing and bi and if they feel okay really it is uh, very useful for them or uh, required for them they may continue with the rest of the or uh, remaining parts of the data browsing solution or they can say no it is not very uh, urgent or uh, very uh, compulsory requirement for them so let us uh, hold the remaining part later we can develop so bottom up approach is the right approach for most of the client because they get the things uh, in bits and pieces and then integrate but what is your doubt yeah please uh, uh, so who will decide the, the top down and bottom up is the us ETL or the other the, the BIP? No, no, not the ETL. So basically, the, when the BI project starts, uh, the very first uh, uh, technical team which involves is uh, business intelligence architect. So we referring as the uh, BI architect. So BI architect basically will define the complete framework for the entire uh, business intelligence solution development. So that person in uh, uh, consultation with the clients depending upon their budget depending upon their requirement depending upon the time frame he will decide what kind of uh, bi implementation framework should be there so whether it should be top down or bottom up that is decided by the bi architect in consultation with the client uh, here I, I see i saw some dragon they they call that um, um, it's called uh, uh, data warehouse data mark and then one one more one more low, um, layer here reporting layer no actually we just give me a second so which one this one you are talking just give me a second i am looking here this metadata okay. what is metadata raw yeah metadata and submit data raw data see the metadata basically is uh, data about data so that is the very simple definition which is say which says that it is a data about data now when we are building our data warehouse or data mart or we are writing the ETL programs every layer we require metadata suppose in data warehouse I am creating so many dimension table fact table so information about my dimension table information about my fact table information about my different uh, strategies which are defined at the warehouse and mart level that we need to keep somewhere so that location will keep all this information is referred as a metadata like within ETL ETL, every ETL tool maintains its own metadata. So whatever job we do with the ETL, suppose I defined a 100 source table, 50 target table, and then we written the maybe 150 mapping programs or ETL program. So this information about the source data objects, information of target data objects, complete mapping program, all these informations are kept in the 
a different location. That is referred as a metadata. So using the metadata, basically we find out what is my source, what are the things in the source, what are my targets, what are the things in the target, how many programs are written, what each program is doing, what sources are there in the program, what targets are in the program, how the transformation is done. All these details uh, we get from the metadata. So metadata basically keeps the complete information about uh, data browsing solution. So anything you want to know, you can go to the metadata, you can browse the metadata information and you can get whatever details you require. But metadata doesn't keep your actual data. So when you are talking about raw data, raw data basically in the data browsing is nothing but your OLTP data, it's source data. So raw data from BI point of view is a data which I cannot use uh, instantly for my analysis purpose. Means I have to do some transformation. And after that it becomes a finished data or complete data. So in data browsing, your OLTP database or source database is referred as a raw data. Whatever comes in the data browse or data mod is your finished data or is a completed data on which you do the analysis and reporting. So the uh, data mod is a part of ETL person? Uh, data mod is a basically your storage. It is the information storage. The question is uh, which process makes my data into information? Answer is ETL process. So is any other doubts or any other query if you have? Suba, you have any query? Oh, no, I'm good. So basically when we are talking about this ETL, so now this, uh, what is the positioning of ETL within this PI solution that should be clear because, so when we are working with the ETL tool anywhere, so if you see ETL tool always sits between two databases, one is a source data, other is target. So as an ETL developer or as an ETL programmer, you are working between two databases, so it is very important that you should have a database concept like SQL is a must. Without SQL knowledge, you cannot work at the ETL tool level. Because the entire ETL tool, whatever we do in the ETL tool, 60 to 70 percent of the ETL process is based on SQL only. Means it is like uh, whatever we do with the ETL tool, those ETL tool based on your input, they generate the SQL command and they fire at the source database level to get the data or to transform the data and they fire the SQL commands at the target database level to insert, update, delete those uh, data. So without SQL, working at the ETL level has no meaning. Means it is uh, of no use. So once you become uh, comfortable with the SQL, your ETL will be very comfortable. Second thing is since you are working with uh, two different databases like OLDB database and warehouse database, then it is also important that you understand uh, what is the structure of OLDB database, what is the structure of warehouse database, like OLDP databases are designed using a one data modeling tool, we refer as a ER data modeling, where we define entities and relations. And data browse structure is based on dimensional modeling, where objects are defined as a dimension table or fact table. So we should have a basic understanding of what is a ER data modeling, how the tables are designed using ER modeling, and what is the dimensional modeling, and how the tables are designed using the dimensional modeling methods. So these are the very basic requirement which ETL programmer or ETL developer must know. So SQL knowledge should be there. What is the ER modeling? Basic thing, basic knowledge of ER modeling should be there. What is the dimensional modeling? You should know. Once you are comfortable with these three things, SQL, ER and dimension modeling, then your ETL becomes a very easy task to learn or understand or implement. So you don't, you don't need to be a data modeler but you need to understand data modeling. So there are two things. When I say you need to know ER data modeling, it is to understand my source table, their relations based on ER model. I need to understand the dimension table and fact table which are based on dimension model. But I don't want to be a designer, database designer or data modeler. But for understanding purpose, I need to know. Because when you go as a ETL developer, what you get is uh, some documents. So you get a ER data model, you get the dimensional data model, and you get the, what are the transformations you need to perform. So based on that, you have to start writing your ETL program. And if you don't understand like what is the ER model, how the tables are related, what is the primary key, what is the foreign key, and what is the master table in 
OLTP system, what is the transaction table, how the master tables are transformed into dimension table, how the transaction tables of OLTP becomes uh, fact data in fact table. So all these are very correlated. So knowing the modeling is uh, important, not the designing the database. So your consultation is ideal. So programming knowledge is required which is purely based on SQL. If you know the programming, as I said, is very good. It will uh, enhance your uh, ETL logic or development logic, but SQL should be there. So when we are talking about this ETL, as I say, ETL tool basically performs very limited tasks, extraction of data. So when we say extraction of data, meaning is like, if I'm dealing with so many different type of databases. So the very first thing is, uh, if I want to extract data from any database, how do I connect? What are the connection type? Is it like direct connectivity or ODBC connectivity or JDBC connectivity? So different type of connectivity is there that I need to know. So when I'm extracting the data, extraction of data should be complete extraction every time or it should be incremental extraction. So it is like uh, I'm loading the data on daily basis. So it is like I load, means extract the source data every day, complete data. So practically it is, uh, it doesn't make any sense that okay, when I'm loading the data on the 50th day, I read the entire 50 days data once again. So already my 49 days data is already loaded. So 50th day, why should I read the entire data again? So it is better that okay, I should load or I should extract the data in incremental approach, meaning yes, first day I extracted the data and loaded. Second day, I should check only those data which are added after the first day or which are modified after the first day. So second day when I am reading the data, I should not read the entire data. I should read only new data for the second day and whatever data has been changed for the second day, only that I should read. So this we refer as a incremental extraction. So advantage is your performance of the ETL becomes very fast because you are extracting very less data. You are transforming it and then loading it. So if the data extraction is incremental, data loading also will be incremental. If the data extraction is complete, data loading will be complete. So extraction level, what are the things we need to understand like connectivity, extraction approach. Then it comes like uh, extraction is done from the database system directly or it is like means it is online or offline. So two approach. Online means my agent tool is allowed to connect to the source databases directly to extract the data. That is a real time data extraction. Some of the clients say that no, my data is OLTP database and OLTP database I do not allow any external component to connect because there are so many critical information or data. So they said that okay, you can access the data offline. Means uh, from OLTP system, data will be extracted and kept in the files. It may be external file or flat file. And then your ETL tool has to read the data from the file and then load into warehouse. So it is like online data extraction or offline data extraction, incremental data extraction or complete data extraction. What is the connectivity approach for data, whether it is like open connectivity or direct connectivity. So these are the things which we need to make sure that is very clear when we are extracting the data. Then comes transformation. Transformations depends upon how the data, source data is different from your uh, data browse or data mod target structure. So like very simple example I take. In the source database they keep a customer name, a complete name. But maybe in data browse they say that you split this name into multiple parts like first name, middle name and last name. In the source system they might keep address as a one single text box where everything is written. But when it comes to this uh, warehouse database, they say that they split this, it should be like uh, flat number, house number separate, area name or street number should be separate, city, state, country, all these should be kept as separate field. So these kind of transformations are there. These are the simple example of transformation, but there will be a lot more complexity involved in the source data. But data now says that all those complex data structure has to be simplified within the data warehouse and data mart. So very clear uh, purpose of data warehouse and data mart is that keep your data in a very simple format, in simple structure so that your voting tool or analytical tool, they do not spend a lot of time 
to make those data, complex data, into simple, simple format before they analyze. So transformation between source system and data warehouse or data mart is basically based on the structure because these two databases are based on two different uh, modeling approach. So their structures are different from each other. And that is why we need a lot of, apart from this, uh, there will be some, uh, like in the source system, we keep the data basically, which is spread across the organization. So it is possible like uh, we have a sales data and customer data, which is spread to multiple uh, database server, to multiple uh, locations. But when it comes to data browse, our approach is that data related to one uh, subject or one process should be kept at one single location. So it is not like we split the data into multiple tables or multiple uh, locations. So we keep it one location. But it may be possible that whatever data we have kept, suppose the customer data, so all the customer data should be kept in one uh, single object. But it may be possible that this uh, data I require at many locations. So in data browse we say that, okay, duplicate this data for different locations to make it a uh, process faster. So duplicacy of data or redundancy of data is very common in data browse to the speed of the data analysis process. But in LDP system they say that uh, we don't prefer duplicate data. We don't want to repeat the data because it is based on uh, data manipulation instead of data delivery. If the data is duplicate, then data manipulation process has to repeat many times, which impact the performance of OLTP system. So when we come to this uh, ETL, so basically like uh, what we do is, uh, we start our uh, course topics from the BI. So first we understand what is a BI. After the BI understanding, so once the BI concept is clear, then the next thing we discuss about is uh, what is a data warehouse. So it is like, uh, what is the data warehouse development method for this top-down approach, bottom-up approach, 